What is going on everybody, welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you are doing well and welcome to today's video which is a Chelsea news video where I'm going to be talking about three different things. I'm going to be talking about new contracts after Callum hudson Adoy signed his new contract, allegedly. Some other promising youngsters are to follow apparently and I'll be commenting on that. I'll also be talking about injury news. Frank Lampard's obviously done his press conference before the Champions League and he's been giving updates on return dates for certain players. And also, I want to talk about what the bookmakers are saying about Chelsea Football Club at the moment. Their top four aspirations, what are the odds? And maybe, what are the odds for top scorer? Anyway, before I do get into today's content, I want to ask that you guys do subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell notifications icon because I upload every single day and I want you guys to keep up with the content. And if you want to help me out, why not? like the video. Thanks guys. Right so then, let's start with injury news. Frank Lampard has commented on who's in and who's out and when they're expected back and what's wrong with them. All that luck. Starting off with big Tony Rudiger, the German international. He came off at half time away against Wolves. In that game he slipped and aggravated a groin issue that had been bothering him for a while. Now taking him off was mainly precautionary because obviously Chelsea were doing so well already at half time in that game. Lampard said afterwards hopefully it gets better in the next couple of days and he's hoping Antonio Rudiger is okay for the Champions League which will obviously be a huge plus and a huge boost for Chelsea. Callum hudson Adoy is now training with the first team fully and he has played a few minutes in the under 23s. His return date is a little bit more mysterious. Maybe he's going to be a bit of an ace up the sleeve for Frank Lampard against some unsuspecting opposition. Who knows but the point is he's fit, he's getting match fit, they're keeping an eye on the injury but it does look like over the next maybe month you might see Callum hudson Adoy pop up in a certain game. Maybe most likely the Carabao Cup game if I was to speculate anyway. Ruben off his cheek not much has changed with him it does look like a few weeks before he'll be training with the team and probably a return closer to the winter break. Reese James now much like Callum hudson Adoy, Reese James is generally fit he's played a little bit for the under 23s as well and he's slowly being integrated into the first team and is now fully training with the first team. There's high hopes for Reese James as many Chelsea fans know and he will be expecting to push for that first place right back spot above Cesar Azpilicueta. Certainly be rotated in at first but much like Callum hudson Adoy, expect him to be dropped in within the next sort of month but perhaps on an unknown day. I doubt he'll start against Valencia in the Champions League but quite possibly against Grimsby in the Carabao Cup fixture. And Golo Kante still has the issue with his ankle sadly and they're being incredibly careful with him as you'd want them to be as pretty much their most valuable asset Chelsea so they're not sure when he's going to return they want to be extra careful that they don't flare up his injury more but it's really difficult I think for Frank Lampard to comment on when N'Golo Kante can return I think if he told them to play he'd probably play it's more a precautionary measure at this point Emerson Palmieri is still out obviously he didn't feature against Wolves and probably won't feature against Valencia. It'll be a bit of a shock if he does, but he should be returning to the team in the coming days, maybe for next weekend. Nothing too serious for Palmieri. Next up, some good news regarding new contracts. After the really good news of Callum hudson Adoy apparently, allegedly, signing his new contract that is yet to be announced, Reese James and Tammy Abraham are both to be rewarded with new contracts. Now let's start with Reese James. This is an interesting one because I guess if he's going to be playing in the first team and he's no longer a low knee, just doing well out at Wigan, you'd expect him to get a new contract. But I think perhaps they would have waited a little bit more to see him play in the team to sort of determine how good this contract is going to be. Because, you know, if he is this world beater everyone thinks he is, then maybe, you know, maybe he'll be on like 80k rather than a 40k new contract. Do you know what I mean? Now, a good example of that would be Tammy Abraham, who apparently is also expected to be offered a new contract. And that makes a lot of sense. Tammy's worked very, very hard over the last few years in terms of going out on loan, keeping his head down, scoring loads of goals, and now delivering in the Premier League. Already, he's taken the number nine shirt, so he's taken that mantle. He's recognised as Chelsea's number nine, and he's hit the ground running. Chelsea's number nine needs to be paid a decent wage and not you know, a Chelsea youth player on loans wage. So Tammy Abraham signing a new contract for say £100,000 a week, sounds like a lot these days but that's normal, that makes a lot of sense 
But for me, it would have been interesting to wait a little bit before giving Reese James a new contract, let him have a few games in the team, see how he performs, and then you can use that to determine A, how quickly he he's going to be an important player and be maybe what wage to give him you know and what sort of terms in the contract to give him regardless though some really really positive news and it further affirms frank lampard's plans of making these academy players these academy prospects really important figures throughout the chelsea team um tammy abraham seems to be the perfect striker for chelsea at the moment in terms of ability desire and sort of striking pedigree at this point and Rhys James looks like he's in the mold of a really positively dynamic fullback which Chelsea need at the moment in that right back spot so they're both incredibly important players to Chelsea and they do both absolutely deserve new contracts I just have reservations of what contract Chelsea will give Rhys James without seeing him play in the first team if all do sign though that will be really positive because that would mean Mason Mount Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Callum Hudson-Odoi, Tammy Abraham and Reese James all sign new contracts. Chelsea Academy graduates all come up through the ranks together, all sign fresh contracts, all in the Chelsea first team and potentially all starters at one point. Lovely scenes indeed. Alright, I want to end this video on something that I find a bit interesting and something that I will probably be continuing to keep an eye on throughout this season and that's what the bookmakers are saying about Chelsea. I find it really interesting how the bookies generate odds and guess quantify and speculate how Chelsea should do throughout the season. Because I find it really interesting, often when Chelsea get made outsiders, they you know perform really well like when they won the Champions League and they were absolutely outsiders or when Conte won the league and Chelsea before that season were favourites to finish 6th or 7th or something. Many bookmakers made Chelsea 7th favourites to uh, win the league last summer now Chelsea aren't going to win the league not with City and Liverpool around but they're still they've gone up from seventh to, to sort of sixth favourites to perform in the Premier League okay so let me explain basically at the moment Chelsea are favourites to finish sixth in the Premier League when they were seventh pre-season now I get that and that makes sense for a lot of reasons but after watching them after watching Arsenal after watching Manchester United I feel like at times Chelsea can actually be more convincing than both of those sides. So this is something I want to keep an eye on. And at the moment, they have Chelsea at sixth. And I use something called Odds Checker, which basically generates the average odds from loads of different bookmakers. And just for fun, I wanted to have a look at top scorer odds because, you know, Tammy Abraham's sitting at the top of the charts at the moment with Sergio Aguero. Obviously, he's not going to be the favourite to be top scorer, but I just thought, where is he at the moment? And he's actually 10 to 1 which I think is about the seventh favourite. Obviously, you've got your people like Mohamed Salah, Mane, Aguero, Harry Kane. Those guys are all going to be ahead. But Tammy is floating around there at 10 to 1. I mean, Jamie Vardy's 20 to 1. Now, Jamie Vardy scores a lot of goals. I know he's getting on a bit now. But for Jamie Vardy to be 20 to 1 and Tammy Abraham to be 10 to 1, that's kind of promising, right? But like I've said before, if Tammy Abraham gets more than 16, 14, 16 goals this season, it will be a successful first season in the Premier League for the young lad but now he started so well he expects him to get closer to 20 and if he does that would be amazing. Like I said I want to keep an eye on the odds throughout the season I might check things like our Chelsea favourites to get a young PFA player of the year because I think that's a really high chance of that if you look at people like Tammy Abraham or Mason Mount or Pulisic if he starts to perform I reckon Chelsea could have that player in their ranks. Anyway guys, I want to know what you think about the stuff I've commented on today's video. Get down in the comments, let me know your opinions on the new contracts for these players, on the players being reintegrated into the team. Who do you think will be starting when everyone's fit? Do you think all those academy players can play in the same starting 11? Do you think Chelsea can make it into that top four this season by the end of the season? Do you think top six will be fine and that's successful? Do you think Tammy Abraham can score 20 goals? Get down in the comments, I want to see all your guys' thoughts and opinions. Remember you can support the channel if you like guys by donating to Patreon or Streamlabs like a dollar or something. And you can also follow me on social media at Football Yannick. That is at Football Yannick on both Twitter and Instagram. Like the video guys if you'd enjoyed the content. Remember to subscribe if you are new to the channel. I'm out, you lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. 
In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me be 